basic computational um, okay, uh, so can you see my screen? Oh, yeah, Yes, we can see your screen. Yeah. Um, yeah, so hello, everyone. Um, today I will be taking you over um, the basics of getting started with Apache Kafka. Um, so before we talk about Apache Kafka, um, let's first talk about the publish subscribe model. Um, so in the publish subscribe model, um, um, or in the public, in the publish subscribe messaging, um, it is a form of asynchronous um, service service communication um, in which um, there is an entity which publishes a message and it is received by all subscribers. Um, and um, in our case, um, the messages are being published to a specific topic. Um, and yeah, this publish subscribe messaging model um, is used to enable um, different event-driven architectures, um, making the architecture of what we're building um, very decoupled and very scalable and allows us to increase performance, reliability, and scalability. Um, so this really allows us to see the published subscriber model uh, much more clearly. So there are pu specific publishers um, and they're publishing into a topic and there are subscribers which are going to be taking that data that has been provided by the publishers from the topic and um, taking that data and doing whatever we want to do with it. Um, and an analogy that we can use to make this really sink in is, for example, we can take a radio station, right? Um, there are multiple radio stations which are um, providing different types of data, right? There is a radio station which would maybe talk about politics. There is one that would talk about soccer, another that would be giving us um, maybe the daily weather, right? So each of, you can think of each of the, those radio stations as publishers and they're publishing specific topics. Um, so for example, um, one radio station is publishing politics um, and people who would like to listen to politics would be the subscribers and they would subscribe to that um, specific topic um, that is being sent by that specific radio station. Um, yeah, so I do hope the publish subscribe model is clear. Um, so now let's go on into what Kafka is. Um, so Kafka is a distributing computing, a distributed computing platform. Um, so it is, um, it uses yeah. events or that specific data we talked about. Um, and yeah, it, it is simply a publish and describe, subscribe stream of records. Um, Kafka really gives us a lot of benefits such as um, fault tolerant storage. Um, and it also allows us to process records as they occur and also provides um, replication of um, our data, um, which in this case we're calling topic log, um, and also allows us to have those, to have each of the topics on different servers. Um, for fault tolerance and many um, different benefits. Um, so this picture here is um, one system with Kafka bringing many different pieces together. Um, so as you can see, um, it allows this microservice architecture with every piece of our system um, simply connecting towards Kafka. So if we did not have Kafka here, for example, um, it would be a shopping cart data that would be coming from over here yeah. and connected to the database over there. Um, and another pricing data that would connect to the database again. Um, specific logs that we might also again be saving towards the database. Um, 
and there would be different KPIs that would what that we would be collecting from many parts of uh, the services that we have. Um, and so this, you can see how many lines we would have been drawing and how many connections there would have been if there isn't this single bus-like structure that is um, bringing all of the pieces together. Um, yeah, so let's go into some topics. Um, yeah, some topics in Kafka. Um, so let's start with Kafka messages. Um, so Kafka messages are the units of the are the smallest units of data. Um, so if you're approaching this from a database background, you can think of this as um, a single row or a record. Um, so this message is also called an event. Um, and a message um, is simply an array of bytes as far as Kafka is concerned. So it doesn't matter if you have an audio, it doesn't matter if you have a string, it doesn't matter if you have images. So yeah, a message is simply an array of bytes. Um, and there is no specific format or meaning that Kafka gives to it. Um, so a specific message, we have some contents. Um, it, it would have a key. Um, this is not, mm, this necessarily doesn't have to be unique. Um, and it would have a value. Um, this is the most important part, which is the content of the message. And it is user defined. So it, it would be what we are, that we are actually producing into Kafka. Um, and it is also timestamped. And this um, timestamping process is, takes place automatically. Um, yeah. And so another um, concept in Kafka is topics. Um, so topics in Kafka, um, yeah. So those specific messages that we talked about are categorized into topics. And um, the closest analogies, again, using the database background analogy, the closest analogies for a topic um, would be a database table um, or simply a folder in the file system. Um, so and in a single Kafka instance that we create, we would have multiple topics. Um, and this office will also support uh, multiple consumers and producers. Um, and we're going to be talking about what producers and consumers are more in the later on. Um, yeah, so brokers in Kafka. So our single Kafka server is called a broker. And we can think of this as um, the actual process that is interacting with the operating system and um, yeah, bring most of the hard portings um, inside in the entire Kafka architecture. Um, so the broker receives messages from the producers. Um, it assigns offsets to them, which we'll get to, um, and commits the messages uh, to be stored in the disk. Um, so, and, and also it services consumers. Um, and responds to requests, uh, to fetch requests for partitions and responding with messages that have been committed to disk. Um, and so depending on the specific require hardware requirements that we have when we set up Kafka, even a single node architecture can actually um, scale up to thousands of partitions and actually handle millions of messages per second. Um, yeah. So. Producers in Kafka. So those the producers in Kafka, if we go back to this graph, are the publishers in this case. So what the producers do are they create new messages. They you can call them publishers or writers, and in general, a message will be produced to a specific topic. And consumers um, are the subscribers in our case and would be taking the data and doing anything. It might be analysis, um, it might be some transformations. Um, yeah. And the consumers are the ones that actually take the data off from the topic. Um, and consumers uh, subscribe to one or more topics and read, they read the message in the order in which they are produced. Um, yeah, so Kafka, Kafka is like, we can think of it as a queuing, a queuing, a queuing, a queuing messaging system. So there is a specific orders 
um, in which our data are data is produced, and um, there is also that specific order, just like a uh, queue data structure, in which the messages are read, and the consumer also keeps track of which messages it has already consumed by keeping track of the offset. So we've talked a lot about the offset, but we haven't seen what it is. Um, so what the offsets is, it is adjust the number to track the message consumption by consumer and partition. So the broker keeps track of what is sent and acknowledged. And there are two offsets, which are the current offset and the committed offset. And the current offset is the last message sent to a given consumer. And the committed offset is the last message acknowledged by a consumer. So it would be the last message that the consumer has actually received and has told the broker that it has received it. Um, so if, for example, let's say if no consumer was actually able to take a data um, and do some, maybe some process, pre -process, some processing on it, um, the broker would actually resend that I committed message um, to maybe another consumer, which is uh, looking for that specific message, um, which, as you can imagine, is a huge benefit. Um, and one last part we, we definitely need to talk about before we go into the technical demo is Zookeeper. Um, so what Zookeeper is, is it's a central real-time information store for Kafka. Um, it helps in broker management. Uh, so in broker registry, um, it acts as an active controller um, of the broker. Uh, what happens if a broker actually fails? Uh, so what we currently what we talked about is a single broker architecture, and what we're going to look at is a single broker architecture. But when we talk about Kafka cluster, and um, in the challenge description, what you actually have to do. Um, is you're not going to have a single broker, but you're going to have multiple broker processes, which are going to make up um, our Kafka cluster. Um, yeah, and also Zookeeper also helps in topics management. Um, yeah, topics registry, partition leader management. Yeah. And so Zookeeper is an in, is a really um, core dependency of Kafka at the moment. Um, so. I think going forward, um, we're going to go to the technical part. So you should definitely go on and read more about consumer groups. Um, Kafka partitions, we have mentioned Kafka partitions um, a couple of parts. Uh, so generally, you can think of partitions as um, like if the topics, if you assume that the topics are tables, um, you could think of the tables being broken down again into smaller pieces, um, which are called partitions. Um, so a single topic can have only a single partition, um, but it can also have multiple partitions. And even those partitions can actually be uh, hosted on different servers, um, increasing our uh, fault tolerance capabilities um, and a lot regions. Yeah, and also, yeah, uh, definitely go on to read about Kafka clusters. Um, this are some of the references for this. Um, this is definitely a good book to read. Um, yeah, and I think let's go to the technical demo. Um, So, uh, yeah. There, okay, so we're going to now go on to set up Kafka. Uh, so there is actually a resource that has been shared um, without using Docker. Uh, I'm going to be assuming that um, people here know Docker, but if not, I think I can give a uh, five minute recap. Okay, yeah. So I'm going to be assuming people already know Docker and Docker Compose. So it's gonna make our lives really easier and we're going to 
set up our Kafka cluster. Um, so we're going to use Docker Compose. So Rafa um, has a question. So maybe do you, okay. Rafa, do you want to ask? Yes, thank you. So um, it's just about uh, the installation of Kafka if uh, you can provide the resource so that we can. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah, definitely. Um, uh, if uh, on the references page, um, the third reference would be um, a YAML file, which would allow you to set it up easily using Docker Compose. So yeah, uh, so you can see my VS Code, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. So we're going to use Docker Compose to start up our Kafka container. So we have said um, that Kafka depends on Zookeeper. So what this is doing is just starting a Zookeeper container. Um, and it is exposing the port 2181 for our Kafka, our Kafka container to actually interact with Zookeeper here. Um, and this would start uh, the Kafka cluster, the Kafka, the Kafka broker. Um, and we're do what we're doing here is we're exposing two ports, um, one port for internal communication um, that is going to have to be happening within the container. And um, we're going to be exposing another port, the external port 9092, um, to actually interact with Kafka from outside of the container. Um, yeah, so that's just about it. Um, So this single line, um, Docker Compose up, is going to create the containers. So if we Docker PAs, we should see the two containers there. So the Zookeeper container and the Kafka container. Um, yeah, so let's go in into the containers and actually see what actually interact with Kafka. Um, yeah, I'll be sharing the code afterwards. What Docker exec um, IT is doing is just going to start uh, an interactive shell um, within our Kafka container. Um, yeah, so if we see now, we are inside of the Kafka container. Um, and so like the, what we're going to be interacting with Kafka, how we're going to be interacting with Kafka is going to be through shell scripts at the moment. Um, and they're found inside of the Vietnami slash bin directory. Or so. Um, slash Kafka slash bin directory. And so we've talked about topics, and now let's go on and create our first topic. So how we would create the, our topics would be to here. So what we're doing here is um, this Kafka topics.sh actually handles everything. If you go on and look into that shell script, it would it is doing other things underneath but simply just interacting with Kafka. Um, we're specifying the Kafka broker and we're telling it to create a topic. Um, we're creating, we're telling it to create a topic and that topic would be 10 topic. So we've said previously that a topic, you can imagine it as, a, as creating a database table with a single partition and a single replication factor. Um, yeah, so it has created our tenf.third topic for us here. Um, and we can go on to create another topic, which is the second topic, um, which would again go on to create a topic for us. So that's how we would go on to create topics. Um, and so now that we have this two topics, the 
Tanakh dot second topic and the Tanakh dot third topic. Um, let's see how we can produce and consume uh, messages into it and from it, respectively. So how we would, yeah, I think we, we can list the files that are there and how we would produce into, into it would be listed inside of the Kafka console producer.sh. Um, yeah, and how we would consume to it would be using the consumer.sh script. Uh, so let's create uh, a consumer. So it would be, again, going back to the radio channel, it would be you create, creating a consumer here would be like have for the radio station having um, an initial subscriber, right? Which which is listening to the which is listening to the to what we're providing. So I think it was second topic, right? Topic that I created, yeah. So this topic is now listening, right? They they're they've subscribed to the news station and they would like to receive some news. Um, they would like to receive maybe some soccer news, right? So, in another terminal. Yeah. Let's split this, right? So, in another terminal, let's again connect to the to the, to the Kafka instance that we have. Um, and so let's create a producer here that is actually going to be producing the news that our dear customer is listening to. So, So they're listening to um, on the second topic, right? So panac dot second dot topic. So we need to go into the script directory. So yeah, so we are now ready to actually give some news to our, so yeah, so I've said hello and they're receiving the consumer receives hello. Um, Khan Academy. Yeah, so the receiver now receives Khan Academy. So we could have multiple consumers um, listening to this streams that are happening um, and this different consumers could be doing whatever they want. For example, one could be a notification system, one could be a trigger for um, another action that's gonna happen later on. And so this is how the publisher subscribe model, the publish and subscribe model works. It allows us to really decouple the system and um, really look at the general architecture um, and give us a very clean, scalable, high performance architecture. Um, yeah, and so lack, luckily um, we don't have to, you know, this would definitely really be cumbersome. Um, having to interact with the shell script is really not easy. And so Kafka actually provides um, client libraries in different, in various languages which would allow us to really easily interact with the Kafka cluster. Um, yeah, so we're going to be, exit from this. So since most of you are familiar with Python, we're going to be using Python to actually interact with it. And going back to the e-commerce example that we saw, we're still going to, yeah, we're going to create a topic um, in which we'd have a cart um, and a specific item maybe is going to be 
produced into that cart. Um, so when an item goes into that cart, um, the that item is produced. And so we we might you might actually use this to maybe provide an incentive, um, uh, discount voucher, or something like that uh, for the user. So. And so you'd first need to have uh, Kafka Python installed. I already have it installed. Uh, yeah, I think I already have it installed, yeah. So um, we're going to be using Kafka Python to interact with it. Um, yeah, and so in the admin side, what we're doing here is we're, we're connecting to the Kafka broker um, exposed at port 9092. Um, we, we saw previously in the YAML file that um, we exposed 9092 for, for outside users. So I'm going to be interacting with it from uh, my machine to the, to the inside Docker container. Um, and yeah, we're simply here creating a topic. So instead we had to, previously we had to use uh, the, the terminal, but now we can do it using Python. Uh, so this would create the cart topic for us. Okay, yeah. So yeah, uh, we now have the cart topic created within our Kafka cluster, our Kafka node. Um, yeah, and so let's start off our consumer. No offset for partition. Yeah, so what we get here is an error of no offset because that topic now is empty. It's like a radio station having um, no content, right? Uh, so we, we, we can't get anything. There is nothing there. So we first, let's produce something. Um, yeah, so inside of our car topic, let's say we'd like to produce a banana. So this is a string, but like we said, Kafka is um, type independent. And so everything is in forms of bytes. So if we to produce into it, it has produced into that topic just the string banana. Um, yeah. So the what we're what I what we're printing here is the topic, the partition, and the offset. So the offset at offset zero, we now have banana um, and a consumer can come and actually So I think that configuration was offset reset from beginning. Um, maybe it should have been from the earliest if it was tracking it. Um, let's go on and produce one more. Um, let me activate my virtual environment. So at offset zero with produced again banana, yeah. And now the, the consumer is actually getting it. So let's go on to produce, let's say Apple. Um, and as card topic at offset two, it would go on and um, produce Apple, and so our consumer should be able to get it, yeah. And our consumer gets Apple. So um, that offset, before that I was playing on, you can 
what a specific consumer can do is like this consumer has gotten already banana has gotten apple and has probably done whatever it wanted to do with the data um, and so another consumer could come and say okay i want to get every every data that has actually that has actually been produced up until now so maybe all of the items that a person who is shopping in our site has actually added to the cart um yeah and so that's that's i think all there is get started from kafka um if there are any questions i think i would like to take i would be i'll try to answer them as much as i can awesome i think that the, that was probably very clear but any question anyone who has tried already and um, <coughs> yeah i have a question yeah. uh, so uh, you can just actually see like the way it goes between the producer all the way to the consumer but uh can it be vice versa, like uh, getting it uh, vice versa from from the place where it's like getting like for example, you have your you have your server and you have your client, so you have you have pushed data from the you have gotten data from the client and you are pushing it into the server, but then now you want to do the other way around, like you want to get it from the server all the way back to the client, or maybe from the consumer back to the uh the other way around so i was i was wondering how you can how you go about it okay so um like so this publish and subscribe model is what you're doing in that case would be the reverse then so the server would now be doing the producing and um, the client would now be consuming instead. Um, and so there once a publisher, like if the client is publishing the data and it's going to the server, the client is the producer, the server is the consumer. Um, so if we want to send that data back, we'd have to make the server the producer and the client the consumer. Um, it would be a one way um, linear line. I think if that, that makes sense. Yeah. Is that, is that clear, Morton? Also, uh, you you just you just you just if the the the, the, the things made yeah, you would, you'd exchange you would exchange those two. Yeah, because at the end, if the server is giving back the data, it is now producing. Okay. Let me let me. I'll try not. I mean, it, I think just maybe like I wanna intervene. There's no such thing. It's it's a name. Whoever is publishing just have to basically publish and send it to publisher. Whoever, if the server wants to become a receiver, then they have to subscribe. So it's really doesn't matter which way you any there's no state you can be whatever you want so you can be at the same time producing and you can also receive your own production back by subscribing to that topic so there's no you can you know it, it it's infinite unlimited like whatever you, you you can do you basically just ask it again like you know in, in one case you tell it i am a publisher publishing this topic and then in another one, the same immediately, you can just say, I'm a consumer, please give me on this topic. So it's it's you who defines what you want to be. So it has nothing got to do with, with Kafka. So the question should be like, how to do it? That one, it's basically, you just subscribe if you want to be a, a, a consumer. And then you publish if you want to be a producer. So, and you one one server can be both, can subscribe to many, can publish to many. So it's a many to many relation. And it doesn't matter who does it. So you can subscribe to your own topic if you want to. 
and that's what you are doing actually because you are subs you know you set up kafka and then you are subscribing you know you are sending it from a front end and then from the front end you are also uh, receiving because sometimes you want to display what the person has replied right if they come back and say like show me then you are subscribing back to your own topic the one you published and then you show them so it's anything is anything there is no definition of what is what it's you choose to be which role it's a role basically okay uh yeah i think i understand it azaria if you're talking you're muted Ah, I was I was talking. I'm saying actually that it must be very clear. Uh, Azari, were you talking? No, no, I, I wasn't talking. So oh, okay. no, but there, it, mean, it means like I think it's clear. I think that we will share this uh, document, like these starters, as well as also just uh, Docker Compose in the Google folder. And yeah, so if you have any questions, of course, just you know you can reach out. Um, yeah. I, anything, I have one anything question. else to add? Yeah, Anastasia. Yeah. Okay, so the first, there's one question from uh, Rafa on the messages. I think you'll just look at that, Azaria. But I wanted to just get a comment. And I were going through this uh, thread with Edidia on uh, since we have to actually connect Kafka with, um, with uh, the S3 bucket. So would you maybe comment a little bit on the connectors and how? We can connect to the S3 bucket. I saw something about a sync connector. So maybe just comment on how you will do the connection. Okay, so um, Kafka has a lot of, uh, I think there is Kafka Connect, which allows us to connect with many third party client libraries. I'm definitely um, using an S3 connector and connecting that with Kafka would be a good thing. Um, I'm not sure. I'm, I didn't um, read the challenge description too early, so maybe I might hide on that. Um, but if we're talking about core Kafka, um, that core Kafka doesn't include um, some some of the external things that you may see, like Kafka streams, Kafka Connect. Um, they're not part of core Kafka, but definitely make life easier and help you build. Uh, more robust system. Um, and yeah, yeah, be, you can add more comments. I'll look at Rafa's. Yeah. No, I mean, it's more like, you know, it's in the same, I think it's the same thing that you guys did in batch four, where you now have a video sent to you and you want to basically put that video back into a, a data lake, right? Basically just in S3. So that's the question. So how would you do that? Like that's the, Um, okay, so yeah, we already had um, the raw CSVs um, on S3 provided for us. So what we were doing was we were taking that data out from S3 and producing it into Kafka. Um, yeah, and so when a new when a volunteer who wanted to record that specific audio went into a URL and some get request was made from the front end. Um, that user was becoming a, a consumer to that specifically pr produced uh, CSV, like line of, line of um, words um, that the person was willing to read out loud. Um, yeah, and so when that person actually recorded that audio and sends it back, um, we're just converting it into bytes. Yeah, like I said again, um, Kafka is data independent and we're taking that audio and that, yeah, and also like what Martin said earlier, the user was both a consumer and 
the producer. So they were producing, they were sending the audio back to the server and it was producing it uh, into the Kafka, into our Kafka cluster. Um, and from that Kafka cluster, it was being taken by Spark and there was some transformation being done, which I'm not really sure of. But I mean, you, you could, you know, I think in that case, there is the scheduling that is happening. But now in the schedule, it's a Python code that is basically as what was shown as a consumer, right? And then you take that one, you process, and then you can dump it into S3. So you don't need even to have a direct Kafka to S3 uh, streaming, right? You could be, it could be stored in the Kafka storage and then, you know, regularly you, you basically process it and then you dump it into S3. Does that, does that make sense? Uh, and just on that uh, point, uh, are you offering like an expiration? Is it like going to expire or will it always be uh, there? like in that particular storage? I think there's no expiration because anyone can come and subscribe from the beginning. So, but you could, of course, it's like a cache, you could also clear some things. Like as you know, if, if it's a system that is really, but the storage is, can be infinite. Uh, maybe correct me, Azaria, if, you, if that is different. No, I, I don't think so. I didn't get that. Sorry. Uh, I was replying to... Uh, is the Kafka storage expires automatically or does it exist? Um, so, no, it's uh, it's something you actually configure. Um, the default configuration is, I think, around seven days. Um, yeah, there is this retention period. And after that, um, the data is deleted and then it gives more space for new data to roll in. But if you want, you can store it infinite. Um, yeah, if you have infinite storage. So it's like a cache. Okay. Uh -huh. So you say it to your you say it to yourself. Okay, so Meron has asked already, but I think it's um, yeah, like I, I was already answered for that. Great. Hopefully. Yeah, I think okay. So I was. Yeah, I was typing for Rafa, but like, okay, so the consumers are taking data. There is, once you read more about consumer groups, I think it will be a bit clearer. But the consumers, um, like, you can think of it as a queue. Um, and so they're, when they're taking, they're at um, a specific offset. Um, I, I was t touching the code. I don't know uh, what I was trying to do before this, but so. They take from that specific offset, um, and at that offset, there is data. Um, so the consumer chooses whether to, the broker actually tracks which consumer has um, consumed data and up until which offset, right? Um, and so when the consumer starts, they can decide to either continue from that offset if it's tracked, or they can start from the initial offset. So beginning from our first produce, from our first um, stream that was published, um, there will be a specific offset associated with that data. Um, and that cons if there is a data, there, there will be an offset. If there, is, if there is nothing published, yeah, the offset error that you said happens. Right, that's clear. Yeah, I think that's correct, Rafa. So she, she typed, every consumer have their own offset. Yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, well, it, a, consumer, a consumer group. Yeah, yeah go on, yeah. No, I'm just saying, like, I think one can see it's like the Kafka being populating actually a queue instead of, and then you basically ask it to populate a queue and what you're defining i mean this is an index like by offset we are really saying like from where even when we say from the beginning of course it's from the cache from whatever is available and then it's basically i think it's slicing in in python array right so it's a way of defining that but of course in this case it's de it's defined within the queue so it's basically 
it's queuing it for different consumer for different consumers. So it's creating queues parallelly. You know, for every consumer, there will be a new queue, and that queue can handle different slices of the, and which means different different offsets. Okay, I think we are good here. Anything else? Wonderful. And I hope also for every team, the cloud, the machine is working. And I haven't seen anyone uh, contacting me that because it doesn't work. Some of you that who didn't, by now it's working. So great, thanks everyone. And thanks really Azaria for really simple and clear tutorial yeah and of Can course I... glad to be here awesome great so tomorrow uh, anastasia there will be is there will there be um, the spark one right it's uh, for the morning morning tutorial at 9 to 10 btc yeah okay awesome great thank you everyone bye Thank you.